the edge of Guilt City, ghosts turn tricks at the gay bar, and all await the arrival of the night host. Clem. Clementine. Hey, Sleepy Socks. Time to wake up. Hmm. Mm. Mm. Morning. Wait, morning? Why'd you wake me up? I was having a nice dream for once. Sorry to bring you back to the real world. Shit's bad here. Uh, that's been my experience. What's going on? Maybe you should have some coffee first. And muffins? What am I, Mary Berry? I have cereal. Hmm. This isn't bad. I should have been blaming the station's coffee maker instead of you. Thanks. Can you repeat that for Milo? In writing, maybe? Okay. I'm ready for the bad news. I think we just call it news at this point. Since Sunday's catastrophe at the Guilt City Fairgrounds. With 13 confirmed casualties and dozens still missing, the incident is one of the most devastating in the city's recent history. So far, Public Works Special Operatives have barely managed to contain the rampant plant growth within the fairgrounds, and authorities are desperately seeking a definitive solution. Thirteen. It keeps going up. Massive crowds are assembled in Guild Square today to demand action and a full investigation into the incident, some even calling for an end to the night post. Many lay blame for Sunday's tragedy on the shoulders of the post, while others believe a mysterious group called the Bird Watchers may have been involved. For their part, couriers of the post are also gathered outside Guilt Tower, asking how the city will guarantee their safety on the job, and how leadership intends to identify anomalies within their ranks. In addition to their demands of the governor himself, the demonstrator's attention is directed toward the newly minted liaison to the night post, Wilhelmina Prescott, who has yet to make a public statement. Oh no, Will! She's right in the middle of this. Yeah, not a great time to be working for the city and the post. Or to be in charge of the world's deadliest picnic. This isn't funny, Val. Didn't say it was. I need to make sure she's all right. Where's your phone? On the wall, by the Black Lagoon pinup. Come on, come on, Will. Will, where are you? Damn it! She's not answering. Didn't you see the news? She has other shit to deal with. More important calls than yours, I reckon. But she always... <sighs> I need to get down there. Down where? You're not actually thinking of going to Guilt Tower. I just need to check on Will. Get in, get out. And how do you think you're gonna do that with Pigeon Gate happening right outside? I... I don't know. I'll figure it out. You'll figure it out. That's even less of a plan than we usually have. You don't have to come. Don't forget what happened to Milo. You need someone to watch your back. Thanks, Val. Who said I was offering? <sighs> All right. But we keep it low-key, agreed? No drawing attention to ourselves. That's your thing, not mine. Hey, Torres! Aw, oh, shit. Who's that? My neighbor. Not the friendliest. You were at the fairground Sunday, weren't you? Uh, no, I... You know who did it? It was your pigeon pals, wasn't it? Look, I should go. Hold on, I just want to talk. Come on. Hey, open up. Fuck off. Nice little community you have here. Mm-hmm. I ain't leaving without an answer. Is there another way out of here? The fire escape. It probably still works. You don't realize how high up the fourth floor is when you're in the building. Just don't look down. And don't uh, use that handrail. I can't believe I considered living here. 
Your landlord is actually Satan. He aspires to be, anyway. <sighs> Made it. And I only picture death by impact with the ground once. And hardly any complaints from my second best leg. How many times are you going to use that line? Until you laugh. All right, let's find a bus. I'd rather not show up in a truck that screams, please fuck with me. Damn, it didn't look like this many people on TV. It won't be easy to get to the doors. Take my hand. We don't want to get separated. Right. Cage the birds! 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 Pretty sure of themselves for clueless people. I kind of feel bad for them. They don't understand why any of this is happening. Do we? They think that shutting down the post will stop it, but it won't. I sure wish we had an alternative idea. One step at a time. Let me know if you have an idea for reaching Will. Can't you reach her directly through the power of love? Ow! You've got a strong grip for a gentle butch. A lot of signs. Value people, not just parcels. No safety, no mail. These must be the pigeons. Love the energy. What about that one? Find the freaks? Okay, I like that less. Val, hey! God damn it, I'm getting recognized everywhere. Here for the protest? Clem, this is Angel from Station 89. Uh, no, we're kind of just passing through. We could use more pigeons out here. Way too many haters. They're definitely... loud. Yeah, what if we could, but... Can you believe all this shit they're saying? I know people have their biases, but the Post would never do something like this. It had to be those... birders, or whatever they're called. So why haven't they been arrested yet? They've gone underground, apparently. Or the city isn't committed to finding them. And you're not worried about the... freaks? I'm not sure what to think about that. Is it just a rumor to make us look bad, or... Are there really couriers who... aren't human? I think we all feel not human from time to time. It's, uh, it's worrying, that's for sure. This is why we need transparency. Why we need to make our voices heard. Protesting's important, but the only way we're gonna get real results is by striking. I'm not sure that. You're with us, right? The citywide courier strike begins today. Look, um, Angel, I'm sorry, but we really need to go. We need everyone to stand together. Pigeons, postmasters, administrators, that's the only way we win this. The only way we make things better for all of us. At our station, we've tried striking before. It didn't end well. The repercussions are harsh. More than you could know. We have to make sacrifices for the future we want. Can't you find the courage to try? It's not a matter of courage. And if my advice carries any weight with you, don't strike. It won't work. I'm disappointed, Val. I thought you of all people would be up for this. Guess you don't know me like you thought. Come on. We need to find a way inside. Inside the tower? There's no way. See the pigs posted up by the doors? No one's getting in. It's a public building. They can't keep us out. Sure they can. Augustine's not afraid to use a little muscle when their illusion of prosperity's threatened. Well, we're still going to try. Let's go, Val. Uh, bye, Angel. Good luck with your protest. Yeah, whatever. I think he's right. Those bruisers aren't letting anyone within ten feet of the entrance. But Will... Sorry, Clem, I think... Oh, shit. Yeah, we should leave. Why? That. How could they? What about our right to demonstrate? The city was complicit in conscripting these people to the post and has no problem punishing them for it. I don't think the administration cares about our rights. It's awful. I wish we could strike. With what we've learned about the other, maybe there's some way to stop this. 
Until then, who knows? I don't mind letting you in this time, but remember to use the back entrance from here on. We're close to the public, and I want to keep this door locked. Aye, aye, Captain. Take this seriously, Valencia. We may not get any protesters this far out, but we can't be too careful. There have been several incidents already that turned violent. I ain't afraid of those towny bitches. So you've said. All the same, I'd rather be prepared. Is this all the mail for tonight? These carts are barely half full. Or are they half empty? I'm afraid that's all. Between the strikes and general distrust of the post, there's not much mail being sent. And even less being sorted. The last thing I expected was for the situation to make our jobs easier. I wouldn't say easier. If the strike continues, you'll likely be expected to pick up another route. Though, I don't expect they'll go on much longer. Anyway, the lighter load for right now means we can focus on looking out for each other. As of tonight, you'll be running your haunts in pairs. Like a buddy system? Ugh, seriously? I wanted to go home early. Milo, you're with me. Right. The Dream Team. Hungry Houses, Part 2. Yes, you're my buddy there, Clam. My partner. That's correct. And take Daffodil. Nick, come on. I bet you wouldn't get on that horse if your life depended on it. But yours might. So just do what I say, all right? A horse is more reliable, more maneuverable, and less conspicuous than your truck. And I have some oat cakes you can feed her. She'll warm right up to you. As soon as I find out what kind of OSHA violation this is... We're not going on a horse, right? We are not. Okay, good. Then let's saddle up. Watch it, kid. We'll trample you with our half-ton megafauna. No, we won't. We will. I heard this monster will do anything for oat cakes. Just go, please. You have to admit, traveling this way is better for seeing the stars. I've seen stars before. Sure, but there's something really comforting about the night sky, isn't there? No matter what happens down here, it doesn't affect the stars. They shine just the same. I guess. But doesn't that make them seem kind of... indifferent? To me, it's more like distant. And that's good sometimes. They're not close enough to see our pain and struggle and ugliness, and we're not close enough to burn up in their heat. Yeah, that's true. That makes a lot of sense to me. What are you doing? Val. Opening a letter. Why? That's what I'm asking you. Hearing letters isn't enough? You have to keep on with the mail crimes? With two routes to cover, it's going to be a long night. Thought I could use something to pass the time? Calm the nerves? What are you nervous about? This one's from a pigeon. Oh. Dear Mom, I'm not sure this will ever reach you. The post is in disarray, and many stations are shuttered completely with all their couriers on strike. I wish you'd gotten that landline last year, like we talked about. I'd really like to hear your voice right now. I guess I can't complain about having no one to deliver this letter when I'm not carrying mail tonight either. It's hard to think about the massive communications breakdown our movement must be causing, even though that's exactly what we want. Money is the only language our city speaks. We have to cut a hole in its pockets to make ourselves heard. So far, the governor isn't listening. I thought the tide had begun to turn for us when I started seeing all those billboards around town and hearing radio spots about how Guilt City can't thrive without its pigeons. But Augustine immediately changed tune after the picnic. I saw them on TV today talking about the correlation of operational stations and the number of supernatural incident reports. Of course the stations that are still running will have more reports, that's just common sense. It's all bullshit. I guess that's politicians for you. They're only on your side when it's expedient for them. Sorry if I sound bitter. The truth is, Mom, I'm not feeling well. I haven't slept in days. My muscles ache, and climbing a flight of stairs leaves me out of breath. I'd see a doctor, but the governor made sure that any couriers who strike can't use their health insurance. 
The other strikers I've talked to have gotten sick too, and I don't see how it could be a coincidence. My friend Mira's hair is falling out, and Abby's too sick to get out of bed. It's only been four days, and I'm afraid the strike is going to fall apart. I'm afraid of a lot of things. Did the government do something to us when we were conscripted? Some kind of insurance policy for exactly this situation? I don't know what to think. I'm so tired. I'm sending some money with this letter so you can get a bus into the city. I know it's a dumb idea, given this envelope may just as likely end up in a ditch, but I want to see you. Please come, if you can make it. Maybe I'm just exhausted and catastrophizing, but I don't know what's going to happen, and I don't want to miss our chance. You stood by me through everything, loved me the best you could, and I'll always be grateful for that. I'm going to rest now. I won't be scared when you're here. Love, Cole. We need to make sure Cole's mom gets that money. It's not in here. You must have forgot. So much suffering. What is it all for? I doubt we'll find a satisfying answer to that. You know, I used to think being a part of the Night Post was an honor in a way. I didn't choose it, but... I thought I was carrying on an important tradition. It felt meaningful to continue my father's work. Maybe this isn't what you want to hear, but... I don't think Tommy Lee ever wanted this for you. I know. He didn't consider it a curse like my mother's family did. But parents always want something better for their children, don't they? Not always. I always wished he'd been more open with me, told me about his work. But he was probably just hoping that somehow he wouldn't have to pass it on to me. He talked about you constantly. Seemed like once a week he'd start a conversation with, You know, I have a daughter about your age. <laughs> that must have gotten old fast. He liked talking about you. He was happy when he was talking about you. But there was something sad in the way he said it. I think he felt sorry for me. And he was picturing you in his place after he was gone. He felt guilty. I know. I should have told him I never blamed him. Honestly, I think that's part of the reason I've been so wary about getting close to people in the post. I saw how much it hurts. I mean, we're all mortal and we love in spite of it, but why dance with fate? Why begin a story you know will end badly? For everything that comes between beginning and end. When you first came to 103, I couldn't help seeing you like I thought Tommy Lee did. An unlucky young person whose aspirations were dashed by the world's most dead-end job. You know, like me. Eventually, I realized you're not like me. You carry it better. You have hope instead of anger. You find meaning in beauty, where I only saw decay. Oh, I don't know about all that. It's true. I... Wish I was like you. Come on, stop teasing me. I've done a lot of that, but only because I have trouble saying what I want to say. So... What is it you want to say? You know how it's hard to tell the difference between jealousy and... Well, I'll never be like you, and that's alright. Being near you is enough. <laughs> well, you can't get much nearer than on horseback together. Yeah. It's kind of like the stars, right? What if we get too close and burn up? Then at least we'd be warm for a time. That's true. What more can we really ask? <clears throat> I'm uh, sorry you can't get a hold of Will. I got through to her secretary yesterday. He said she's fine, but Guilt Tower is still on lockdown. I'm not surprised. I don't know that the protests were peaceful to begin with, but they're sure not now. There was a shooting outside my apartment building last night. You didn't tell me. Were you in danger? <sighs> no. I was at work. All the same, it's probably safer for you at your place. Oh. Right. But maybe tomorrow I could come by and you could show me more of this horsemanship stuff. Really? I thought you were terrified of Daffodil. <laughs> hey, I never said... Yes, sweetie pie, we're talking about you. So what changed your mind? 
I was thinking about it, and I realized it's kind of like driving a big truck made of meat. So that's pretty cool. Who knows? Maybe this cowpoke thing could be a good look for me. Why wait till tomorrow? The moon is out, the road is long. We're here now. Come on, Daff. Whoa, hold on. You hold on too. Uh -uh. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Thank you for joining us on tonight's route. If you'd like to support Station 103, consider joining our Patreon for weekly bonus stories and early episode access. Or check out our Redbubble and coffee shops for night post merch and digital story collections. Send a letter to a fiery activist and tell them about the night post. My name is Professor Ryan, located Bunker A-12. Over the course of these broadcasts, I will be sharing with you the story of two brothers, Roman and Elliot. <clears throat> Let us begin. Off grid. For a week. I really hope we've got the balls to see this through. You all set, brother? Aye, aye, Captain. Onward into the unknown, then. Left path first, I think. Single meteor just drops out of sight. Drops. Twists. Sharply turns. And the night sky is alight with a billion stars that aren't and can't be but are. Roman. Hi. Shh, shh, shh. I wish I could tell you now that the brothers went home and escaped the horror of the world we now find ourselves in. But you know I cannot do that. Whilst their story may not yet inspire hope for us, I believe that buried within this is the key to what we're looking for. Oh God. Wake of Corrosion is a horror audio drama set in a nightmare-ridden apocalyptic England. Join Professor Ryan in Bunker A-12 as he uncovers the story of two brothers who head out on an off-grid camping trip only to discover the world around them is not at all as they left it. Wake of Corrosion is available wherever you get your podcasts, and you can listen to the whole of Season 1 and 2 now. If you'd like to support the show and hear their miniseries, Letters to Shadows, check out their Patreon at patreon.com slash wakeofcorrosion.